I've configured just about every GL iNet router out there for hundreds of clients. And I think this might be the best travel router yet. The new Slate 7 is fast and packed with features remote workers and expats are gonna love. In this video, I'm gonna break down why this might be your next essential piece of travel tech. Let's get it. What is good, Mexican planners? If you know anything about me, you know I love coffee and tech. And the GL iNet routers have been one of my go-to tools for helping people stay connected across borders. I've worked with nearly a thousand GL iNet VPN routers helping customers configure, customize, and get the most out of their personal VPN setups. So when GL iNet dropped the Slate 7, I had to check it out. Big shout out for GL iNet sending me this Slate 7 all the way to Mexico before launch. All right, let's get to the first impressions right out of the box. You can see that this router is about the same size as the Slate 1800, although it feels a little more substantial, well-built than the Slate 1800. They have about the same form factor, although the Slate 7 VPN travel router has more of a square or cubicle body. One of the things that happened with the last version of this router, which was the MT3000, is that it went from three ports on the GL iNet Slate 1800 to two on the MT3000. Well, the Slate 7 VPN travel router continues that trend and gives you two ethernet ports, one for WAN and one for LAN. Although both ports are configurable, so you can change them to be either two WAN ports or two LAN ports, which is a very nice addition in the latest version of software. Both ports of the Slate 7 VPN travel router are blazing fast for a router of this size, and really for a router of any size. This router has two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. Let me say that again, it has two 2.5 gigabits per second ethernet ports, which is blazing fast for 4K, 8K streaming, or gaming with super low latency. Also, the wireless side of this device is at the top end of the game. It features Wi-Fi 7 support. It includes three different spectrums, six gigahertz spectrum, five gigahertz spectrum, and the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. Now, the five gigahertz spectrum features 2.8 gigabits per second over Wi-Fi. That's faster than the ethernet port. And the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum gives you up to 687 megabits per second. Again, this is phenomenal speed for this router. This device even has support for multi-link operation, which means it can use any of those three lanes for every packet. So it can make the decision on what's the best path to send those packets, giving you a faster, more reliable, longer distance connection than you would with any of the three separately. Let me just break out down what all of that speed means. It means faster zoom and team calls, fast downloads, and great range, even in Airbnbs with solid concrete walls like you find in the tropics. In my house, I have eight deco mesh access points for my wireless network. And this device is able to cover 60% of my home upstairs through concrete walls and floors with no problem. I'm able to get internet over my VPN all the way to the back section of my house. This device has a coverage of probably three to 4,000 square feet in just this little small router and at speeds that are unheard of in a device like this. GL iNet has really stepped up the game with this device. But let's talk VPN speeds. Out of the box, this thing is capable of doing 540 megabits per second over a wire guard point-to-point site-to-site VPN. For open VPN connections, it's able to do up to 100 megabits per second. Now my Slate 1800s on my personal VPN, I would typically see around 165 megabits per second from Mexico to Atlanta, which is phenomenal. That is way faster than you're gonna get with any public VPN service. However, with this device using my iPhone 16 Pro Max, which has Wi-Fi 7 capabilities, and using the MLO Wi-Fi signal, I'm able to get up to 261 megabits per second down and 176 megabits per second upload speeds coming from Atlanta. Now that is amazing. Speaking of public VPN services, version 4.7 of the firmware and the Slate 7 VPN travel router, it now has built-in WireGuard support for NordVPN and four other VPN providers like Surfshock, Azure, Molvad, PIA, IPVanish, and HideMe. Molvad and Azure were already there for WireGuard, but now we have support 
for Nord and the other ones that I just mentioned. In addition to six WireGuard configurations, you also have the ability to support over 30 VPN services using a manual configuration. What I mean by support for public VPN servers is you simply put in your credentials for one of those VPN services like Surfshark and it will go and download the VPN configuration files for you for those particular services. All you need are your service credentials. All right, so next let's talk about some use cases of this device. As you know, I think of the Geo iNet VPN travel routers as a Swiss army knife tool that everybody should have in their bag when they travel. First use case I will say that you can use this device is if you're going to a hotel or on a cruise and that cruise has a captive portal and you need to connect multiple devices which will incur additional fees per device, use this device to connect to the cruise ship and then from there connect all of your devices to this thing. It will absolutely save you money. I'll leave a link to the video where I use the GL iNet 1800 VPN travel router on my cruise to Alaska last year. I'll leave that link above. Second use case that I will say is if you're an expat and you wanna make sure that you can get television or shows from the US, whether that's watching Hulu, Amazon, or Netflix, this device is absolutely perfect, especially since it supports 30 public VPN services and six of them are already built in and ready to go out of the box. All you need is an account with NordVPN, plug in your service credentials and boom, you're up and running and your whole house be behind a VPN. Now, I don't recommend that use case for remote workers. I absolutely recommend you set up a personal site-to-site -site VPN. And this device with its Wi-Fi 7 speeds that gives you coverage throughout your apartment or flat, with two of these GL iNet Slate 7 VPN travel routers, you can set up a personal site-to-site -site VPN that will give you tremendous speed, but more importantly, it will allow you to bring your home IP address wherever you travel. I've helped hundreds of clients set up personal site-to-site -site VPNs, and it's hands down the most secure and private way to work from anywhere in the world. So one of the new features with the Slate VPN travel router is this screen here. On the previous versions of the Slate series of routers, all you had is an LED that was either white or blue. Now you have a full color interactive display panel. You can actually do things like connect to the router, um, see if it's running in repeater mode or ethernet, so you can connect to the Wi-Fi and see different statistics if you're using WireGuard or what have you and if it's connected. So lots of information right here, meaning you don't need to use a computer to connect to it all the time, which is fantastic. However, being a security professional, the first thing I thought about was, can you lock this screen? If you're using a personal site-to-site -site VPN, you don't wanna press a button on this touch screen and disable your VPN. So you can lock the screen, but it's not actually um, able to be locked by a password, which I would love to have. Because the other thing is, it gives you a QR code to connect to the wireless of this device using just the QR code. So it puts the password and everything in for you automatically. While that's super easy to get up and running and configure, it is a little bit of a risk in that anybody that has access to this front panel and that can slide their finger over can also access the Wi-Fi. They can come up with their camera, snap the QR code and be on this device. So if you're working in a coffee shop as an example and you step away, somebody could jump onto your VPN. I looked all through the interface and the advanced configuration, but I would love to see if there is an option to create a password to lock that panel down so that you cannot swipe it to unlock it or get access to the wireless networks. Now, one of the things I did do, however, is you can turn off the different Wi-Fi signals. So on this device, all I have enabled right here, you could just press the on and off button, which again, you may not wanna do, right? But on, my, on this particular device right now, I have it set just for multi-link operation. So it's not, um, the 5G and the 2.4G signals aren't broadcasting and aren't on right now. It's just the MLO link. There's no reason that this should not be your go-to device if you're planning to travel or set up a personal site-to-site -site VPN. I recommend that you get two of these because they're low profile. They actually run relatively cool. And one of the things that I mentioned earlier, I'm running this from a battery backup and I have been for the last four hours since I unboxed this. It's only used one bar of this 20,000 milliamp power supply. I would guesstimate that you get between 12 to 15 hours of portable power 
using this particular you know anchor battery pack if you want to have access to all the things that i recommend check out the link that's in the description notes this router doesn't ship until may but you can pre-order it right now and you can order up to 10 if you'd like once this thing is shipping there's no question that this is the choice for vpn travel routers in 2025. if you found this video helpful do me a favor and hit that like button help spread this video to other people that need to see it if you want to know more about using this as a personal site-to-site -site VPN, check out the video over here. And until next time, Mexit Plans Monty, remove.